Hey there, and welcome back to the video series about RESTful APIs using the main stack, MongoDB and Express and Node.js. So we created the database uh, in MongoDB Atlas before. We have a cluster running, and now we are going to start creating the actual project in Visual Studio Code. So first of all, um, we're, we're going to need some uh, dependencies for this project, and we are going to use Node.js server-side JavaScript. So uh, we have to go to nodejs.org where we can download the newest version that is recommended for most users. So that is the long-term support here. And I already have it installed. So, but otherwise, you can go and take the version. This is the one for Windows. If you're on a Mac, you will also have versions for Mac. You also have uh, Linux uh, binaries that you can work with. Okay. Uh, so that is the first dependency. Uh, we're going to use Express, and Express uh, will be installed. Uh, we're going to install this uh, in the editor, so we're not going to download anything here, but Express is a fast and, as it says, unopinionated minimalist framework for Node.js, so it will make it a lot easier for us to actually use Node.js. Otherwise, we would have to code a lot uh, on the server side. So we're going to use Express, and we will also use uh, Mongoose, which is kind of a, uh, a library that sits between Express and then MongoDB. And it makes it a little bit easier to work with MongoDB, in my opinion. And it will also allow us to create uh, schemas for our database. So we can actually create a definition for what kind of data we want to store, and also restrictions if there should be some data that should be present, okay? And we're also gonna install Mongoose using uh, Visual Studio Code. And as I've said a couple of times, uh, I'm going to be using VS Code. And there could be a lot of editors. And of course, you don't need to use Visual Studio Code. You can use uh, Sublime Text. You can also use uh, Brackets or Atom or Notepad++. So, uh, it's kind of up to you what you want to use. Okay, so if we go to, I'm just going to open up a Windows Explorer here because I'm on a Windows machine. Uh, and if you're on a Mac, you should create a new directory somewhere where you think it is fit for you. Okay, but I have a work directory here, JavaScript, and I'm just going to, just going to create a new directory in here. Let's call this uh, man restful. API. Okay, so this is the directory that will host our uh, our code and our project. So one way is to right click on it and open with code. If you selected this when you install Visual Studio Code, I think I'm just gonna go and start up code the manual way here, and then it's gonna open up Visual Studio Code here. Then we can go to File and we can select Open Folder. Uh, we select Man RESTful API. And it's going to open up a, uh, a new welcome tab here. We don't need that. So this will be the place for our uh, project here. And we're going to need the command line interface. So the way that you actually open up a terminal is that we go to terminal, new terminal. And Visual Studio Code can use a variety of different uh, terminals here. And I have installed git bash. And you can also use the command prompt in Windows. If you want to have git bash, you should install just the git uh, download. Then you will have the git bash with that. Okay. Uh, so that is why it says uh, it looks a little bit different than the normal Windows command line here. But if you installed Node.js, you should be able to actually type uh, node and then dash v. It should say 14.15.1. This is the version that we installed. And we also need NPM. That stands for Node Packaging Manager. This will be our package manager that will install all of our dependencies in the project. So if we run NPM V, it will save the version of NPM. So that's all nice, really good for that. So we're gonna issue NPM init first. This is going to actually uh, create a, a new node project in our new directory here. So it's going to ask us a bunch of questions here. 
we can use npm install to install a package and save it as a dependency in the package json so there's going to be a file called package json that will keep track of the uh, the actual project and the dependencies and much more so first off what is the name main restful api that seems okay uh that's because we should actually have it can only be in one uh, one word, so we can't have any spaces, so let's just keep it API version, that seems okay, description, we can type in Mongo DB and Express Node.js uh, RESTful API, just to have an explanation to what this is actually short for so the MongoDB and Express Node.js RESTful API. Entry point. In here we need to make a small uh, modification to what npm actually suggests because it says index.js and this can be okay but uh, if you're using, um, if you're making an application that will be standing on its own, running on its own as a server, uh, then you can call this you you should call it server.js, but there is a lot of different conventions on this. So one way is to call it server.js, another is app.js, and we also have index.js as uh, npm suggests. I will write server.js because we're actually creating kind of a server that will run on the server side, and then we can connect various client side uh, frontends using Vue or React or Angular or something like this. So we get we are kind of creating a server that will serve the different routes that you use on the RESTful API. Uh, but if you select index.js, you can make it work no problem also. But uh, I think server.js is the right choice here. Uh, test command, we're not gonna do testing in this project, uh, maybe later on. Git repository, I'm not gonna explain here uh, how we should set up Git, but you can also type this into your package.json file. Keywords. This is more if people search for your project. We can issue MongoDB, Mongoose, uh, Node.js, Express.js, and so on and so forth. Uh, author. I'm just going to put my initials here. Or the license, open source license. And is this okay? This is okay. So now we have a package.json file. We can see basically just put in all the different uh, entries that we uh, gave it before so and we can extend this file a lot more okay so that is nice so the next thing be before I close this video for the setup is that we need to install a couple of dependencies that we will need and for that we will use npm uh, the package manager so we're going to use um, something called mongodb this is the library for actually using mongodb atlas that we set up earlier. So we're going to install MongoDB, we're going to install Express, the framework, we're going to install Mongoose, that is the, uh, the extra library that helps us uh, interacting with MongoDB. Then we're also going to use a library called uh, dot env uh, flow that will help us manage uh, environment uh, variables, port, and maybe the database connection string, and so on. And then we will use body parser to actually parse JSON data and also other types of data that we get from the API. And finally, cross uh, env mainly to support uh, env files in um, cl uh, cross platforms if you have a Linux or you have Windows or Mac. So that is a, a bunch of different. Uh, <laughs> So that is more or less the dependencies that we are going to use here. There will be more when we also start working with authentication, but we're going to install them at a later point. So we're going to run this, uh, and then npm is going to install our dependencies. And we can see in a minute that we got a new folder here called node modules. All nice there. We have our dependencies there and it has updated the package.json file with the dependencies so that is also really nice cool so now we got the basic setup we have uh, initialized uh, a new project we have node modules we have our package.json 
in the next video we will start actually coding the server to see if we can get a response in the web browser so the first route we will try to set that up okay so hope you make this work and have fun with this bye bye